This is for my family doctor colleagues. There was a big win earlier this year by the SGFP that kind of flew under the radar. It has to do with the relativity formula and how family doctors are paid relative to the, to the other specialties. And it specifically, it has to do with what's called the return on education or the, the factor that goes into the equation that determines how much a, more a specialist should make than a family doctor uh, due to the each year of extra education and training. On January 6th, the SGFP sent a letter, uh, a year in review email to, to membership. And it highlighted the, the different things that uh, SGFP had been up to over the last year. And if you scroll down to the compensation and financial progress, the third bullet point in says secured a significant victory with, with the return on education review. And then not only that, it's reflected in the relativity going forward. That means it's applied right now this year to the large PSA award of 10%. It is effective now, and this translates into potentially thousands of dollars for every family doctor this year and every year going forward into the future. It's a huge win. Earlier in 2024, the SGFP was able to privately hire expert economist Boris Crouch, and he did some work looking at the data set and the methodologies that were being used to calculate the return on education factor in the relativity formulas. He found that um, uh, flaws in, in, in the way that it, that it was being calculated. The SGP was then able to present that data and proposal to the OMA on June 20th, 2024. And basically in summary, with, with Boris's work, it showed that the return on education, if you use the correct data and methodology, instead of being 7.2% per year, was more like 5.3% per year. Now, the difference between 7% and 5% compounded by or multiplied by three years, you know, the average difference between a two-year family medicine residency and, say, a five-year specialty, that's three years difference. Three times seven is 21%. Three times five is 15%. So we were able to show that the, the gap between or uh, that was being used to calculate return on education in the formulas should actually only be 15% uh, uh, as opposed to the prior 21%. We closed the gap by 6% in that relativity formula. Well, when you compare the now the new 5.1% return on education variable to the old 7.2%, it equates to a difference of potentially about 1.6% difference in the amount of money that gets attributed to family doctors in this year's PSA alone. And again, that means every year on an ongoing basis too. Um, so this equates to potentially thousands of dollars per family doctor per year. Now I've been involved with the SGFP and OMA for many of the years over the last decade. It's kind of went in and out, but uh, I was a part of many uh, battles and debates and uh, proposals from the SGFP to adjust the relativity formula and, and, and things like that over the years with the OMA. Um, and it's sad to say that most of them we lost uh, every time. It fell on deaf ears. There was always a reason that they couldn't implement changes or proposals or correct errors in the formulas that they'd already made. Um, so it was very disheartening over, the, over those 10 years. But that's why this win is such a key highlight to, to celebrate here because finally SGFP has a, as a, as a significant win in, in terms of the relativity formula, helping to narrow that gap between uh, the, specialties, the specialty of family medicine and other specialties. Uh, number one, for years, there has been a redundant double penalization in relativity formulas. The actual candy formula that the OMA has used for years contains two modifiers that are redundant and only penalize family doctors. There is the opportunity cost modifier and the skills modifier. Both are meant to account for extra years of training and uh, an education, uh, similar to what's now being called the return on education in the FAIR formula. Then there's the whole work on the candy uh, relativity formula for the number of days worked that I was uh, a part of and actually initiated many years ago. StuartMedicine.com and the OMA section and the OMA relativity and negotiations section there uh, I've got a whole bunch of information on here back from several years ago when I uncovered 
the flaw that was uh, being used in the candy relativity formula. Basically, it was um, only allow it, or giving credit to faux doctors uh, less days. It was saying that faux doctors were actually were working less days than we than they actually were, mainly because in the faux model, much of a family doctor's work is not necessarily captured by OHIP fee for service type billings. Then there was the return on education modifier in the fair relativity formula that this whole video is about. And uh, we, we were fighting with this for, for years and only recently did we finally get awarded the win. A few years ago, I was the chair of the non-fee-for-service primary care working group that was exploring uh, the relativity formulas. I was actually the chair of the non-fee-for-service primary care working group, which was a subcommittee of the REC and reported the REC. We were basically in charge of coming up with uh, d determining what, what uh, income should be included versus excluded in the relativity formulas for non-fee-for-service family doctors, namely foes and fins. So we had a, this uh, summary after many weeks of work, and we had a very comprehensive and robust methodology on why uh, things should be included or not included. And in the end, we had said, uh, one of the big things was that we said CCM fees should not be included. So, and that was in our final recommendation, yet um, when, when the final report went to the RAC, the RAC ultimately declined and overturned that recommendation. And for, for us, that's why CCM fees are actually still included in the relativity formulas. So I know it can sometimes seem like the SGFP is invisible or what is the SGFP doing for me? Um, and I hope this video shows at least one of the tangible outcomes we, we've been able to, to accomplish over the last year. That's why your $310 of voluntary dues each, each year to the SGFP specifically is so important. The mandatory dues that you pay to the OMA, most of those go to the OMA and its, and it, and its operations. Very few actually end up in the, in the SGFP's budget to do some of this important work that we do on your behalf. So thank you to everyone who contributes. And, and if you're not contributing those voluntary dues each year, please, please consider doing so because we could do so much more with so much more. And special thanks to the executive team who made this happen.